Hi, good evening. It's uh, nice to be back. And uh, for tonight, we'll try to close out the four Wednesday mini series about Joseph the Dreamer. So, uh, just to have some uh, uh, refresher. Uh, part one, we talk about Joseph the Dreamer, of course, his dreams. Part two, Joseph being the new governor of uh, Egypt from prison to palace. Part three, we talk about Joseph, the Prince of Grace. This is uh, uh, how he showed mercy, tremendous mercy towards his brothers. And, uh, you know, he's a true brother's keeper. And uh, for tonight, we will close out with the part four, Joseph anointing. Talk about his anointing, why his anointing is very important, why his uh, uh, blessing is very important, and uh, why he became the, the so-called forgiving, blessed ruler of Egypt. So, uh, in, uh, in chapter 46, so, uh, we, we, if, we, if we will try to, I'm sorry, if we will try to recall, it's, uh, the story of Joseph started with uh, chapter 37. This is when uh, Joseph had his dreams and then he was sold into slavery. In chapter 38, uh, it was about the story of Judah and Tamar. It, it is not related about Joseph. But in 39, uh, the writer wrote again about Joseph. It is about Joseph in a Potiphar's house. Um, these were, uh, he was a good uh, servant. Uh, these were, he, he was tempted by the Mrs. Potiphar. And then uh, he went to prison. And in chapter 40, uh, Joseph interprets two prisoner's dreams, the butler and the baker. And in uh, chapter 41, Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams. And uh, then after he interpreted this, he was exalted into to the throne of being the governor of Egypt. In chapter 42, Joseph, uh, Joseph met his brothers again in Egypt because they are trying to buy something from Joseph. And then um, the, the brothers return home, of course, uh, without one of the brothers who were who stayed behind with Joseph in chapter 43 uh, since everything was gone they need to go back to Egypt so they made the decision to return to Egypt and uh, try to buy something again from Joseph and then uh, they returned to Egypt and this time with Benjamin and then in, in chapter 44 he he tested his brothers but he, he had a series of tests for his brothers but this time uh, Joseph, uh, gave, Joseph gave the final test for his brothers. And then uh, it also talked about uh, the plea of uh, Judah for Benjamin's life. And then uh, this, uh, with this plea, Joseph was able to you know, um, understand where his brothers are came, coming from. They, they, he, he, he was able to prove that, oh, my brothers have already changed compared to you know, the way they used to treat me before. In chapter 45, Joseph reveals his identity, uh, who he really is. And uh, Jacob leaves for Egypt in chapter 46. So this is the part for of our mini, mini, uh, mini series for uh, J uh, Joseph the Dreamer. So in chapter 46, Jacob goes to Egypt. So Israel sent out with all that was his. And when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father. He said, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you, for I will make you, into a great nation. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again, and Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Grabe, no? Joseph anointing. For me, that is Joseph anointing. I remember when, when I was praying before, I asked the Lord, Lord, teach me how to pray. Teach me something that, you know, that uh, when I pray, it will benefit me. And then suddenly it popped in my heart that uh, I need to pray about anointing. And specifically, I was reading the book of uh, Genesis and specifically uh, about the story of Joseph. I learned something that I need to pray 
for anointing for myself just like what what we, just like what Joseph had see this kind of anointing is not anting anting or lack of charm that you can buy in the Visoria. this is not a gimmat that you can buy in Quiapo this is not you know a political charisma this kind of anointing is something that is in you that was only given by God and it stays there as long as you stay with God but if you're like King Saul when he was anointed the Lord's favor was with him but when he went out of God's way the anointing, does, the anointing, the anointing left him but if you don't have the anointing you can activate the anointing as long as you, you know, you, you try to, uh, to as, as long as you have this beautiful relationship with God. You see, anointing is something that, um, uh, it's, it's a mark. It's a mark of, it's a mark of God to us that you are set aside for something special, for a, a special past. For for a uh, for special destiny, they, you know that that no ordinary people can do. You see, being with God makes you an extraordinary person. Anyway, let's move forward. In Genesis forty-seven, it says here that um, in Genesis, let's look. Uh, let's look into my Bible. Genesis forty-seven. In Genesis forty-seven, it's about Pharaoh welcomes Jacob. These were, uh, uh, you know, the, the Pharaoh was excited to see Jacob, the father of his, you know, golden child. And, uh, and uh, uh, the land becomes Pharaoh, talks about the land becomes Pharaoh. Israel settles in Goshen, the, the luscious part, the, the, you know, the most healthiest land uh, in Egypt. And in chapter 48, this is where uh, Jacob blesses Ephraim and Manasseh. Who are these two kids? These are the kids of Joseph, who was given by God, who was part of the anointing of Joseph. Now, now, uh, you see, anointing produces a lot of things, a lot of blessings for us. Now, not just wealth, not just health. It's, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's, it, it, it transcends towards your descendants. So, Abraham and Manasseh, they even became two tribes eventually of uh, Israel. And then in chapter 49, these are, you know, where you can, where you can uh, find the, 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 the blessings and the, the, the last words of Jacob. These were Jacob blesses his sons from, from Reuben to Benjamin. You see, blessing is very important. That's why when you are... Um, in a church service on a Sunday, never ever, you know, try to leave ahead of the other people unless the pastor gave the blessings. It is not the pastor who gives you the benediction. It, it's not the pastor who blesses you. It is the power of God who blesses you through the pastor. Uh, let's make it clear that the pastor has no power or anything. It is the power of God. It's the blessing of God that is being, you know, articulated by the pastor after the service. So blessing is very important. That's why I remember Jacob and Esau were fighting for it. You know, a lot of people were, you know, in the Bible, you can see that they, they are into it. Blessing, blessing is very important in a sense that it can predict or it can dictate what kind of future you will have. So for us, for us believers, uh, it is important for us to uh, acknowledge the blessings of God. It is very important for us to have a grateful heart towards the blessings of God in our lives. It is very important for us to uh, express to other people and try to share uh, our, our ble the, the blessings that we're receiving from God. It is very important to us to testify the blessings of God in our lives. You see, let us look back as we try to close this, uh, uh, as we try to close out this uh, series. 
we we started with uh, the the part one is where you know Joseph the dreamer he he kind of dream of something that uh, uh, things will bow down from him you know and uh, all his uh, brothers were were kind of jealous and jealous towards him and you know they didn't like Joseph because he's kind of you know he's, he's kind of snitch and uh, and. Uh, they don't like the idea that Jacob is being always favored by his father, Jacob. Uh, no, Joseph is being favored always by Jacob. Right. <laughs> Did I say that, that right? Jo Joseph was being always favored by Jacob. And <laughs> in part one, we, we learned that Joseph is a picture of Jesus. That one day, Anthony will bow. Uh, Joseph were able to... to predict Joseph were able to forecast what will happen in the future through dreams. Same with Jesus. There were like a lot of prophetic visions that, that even the word of God says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And this story is like a picture of Jesus in the future. That whosoever, as long as you are a human being, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, whether you're an atheist or a lover of God, it doesn't matter. All will bow down in the end. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Number two, uh, in, the, in the first part, you know, it, it, the study was able to to project that uh, it, whatever happened to Joseph, God always, God, God has always a plan for his life. Same thing with us. God has always a plan for our lives. Whether you're experiencing goodness right now, whether you're experiencing misery right now, so you know. It, in spite of all this unpleasant pandemic situation, in spite of all, uh, you know, uh, you know, death, sickness, or whatever, still, God has a plan. Never, ever doubt God's plan. And number three, I uh, we particularly learned from Joseph that he was able to praise God in the hallway before God opened the door for him. You know. He, it's like you are crossing a dark hallway and sometimes it's hard to think of something else but you are just encapsulated by fear. Here's the thing. During those times that you feel like you're alone, during those times that you don't feel like, uh, you know, getting up in the morning and doing something for your life or you, you, you feel like you just want to give up, this story suggests that be like Joseph. Instead of giving up, instead of you know being a crybaby, instead of blaming other people, he start he started praising the Lord until he saw you know the, the light at the end of the hallway. There's a door that is being opened by God for him. It will be, it will be the same thing for us. And uh, part two, we 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 were able to. Uh, learn about uh, Joseph being promoted from prison to palace, the new governor of Egypt, you know, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, governor. Uh, what are the learnings we learn from part two? Part two, uh, like Joseph, like Jesus, Joseph is trustworthy. You know? Jesus, uh, Joseph, uh, uh, he, he's an encourager. Joseph, he has this beautiful never say die attitude. Parang he, he Joseph is also a man of faith. These are all reflections of of uh, the, the the very characteristics of Jesus. Now, remember, he was only seventeen years young when he was sold as a slave. He he, he after ten years, um, he was twenty seven when he he became a prisoner, and then thirty years. 30 years old, siya, he became a governor of Egypt. So, you know, we all know that he was able to interpret the, the, 
the the what do you call this? He was able to interpret the dreams of the butler and the baker. But before that, uh, when Joseph was incarcerated, he became somehow the the little governor of that uh, of that uh, jail of the prison. Now, why? You see, you will see the pattern of Joseph. This is, the, this is what the jo Joseph anointing that I'm talking about. When he was 17 years old, okay, when he was 17 years young, he was anointed by God to be a good manager, good supervisor, good engineer, good leader. Why? He, he used to supervise his brothers. All the favor, all the trust was given to him by Jacob. When he was 27 years old, for 10 years as a slave, in Potiphar's household, he was the, the main man. He was the butler. He was the, he was the leader of all the servants. And when he went to prison, you see, the captain of the guards, he, he made, because of trustworthiness, he made him as the head. You know, it's like, uh, what do you call this? It's like the, the chief prisoner. Why? Because Joseph is a trustworthy person. In spite, of, in spite of all the miseries in life, Joseph remained to be trustworthy. That's why he became the chief prisoner there. So when he met these two prisoners, the butler and the baker, you know, he, the, the first thing that he asked, are you okay, guys? Uh, is there anything that I can you know, be, be of service to you? With, with 10 years in slavery, three years in prison, all the miseries in life. You were you were taken out. You were taken out from your homeland, and yet you have the audacity to ask people, "Hey guys, are you okay?" Instead of you know, for normal people, they will just you know, uh, be in one corner and cry, and you know, and uh, blame at other people and blame God, and you know, that's what I used to do. But Joseph, he's trying to encourage people who just came in into the prison. Because he's an encourager. Even when we are in the midst of storm, still, we can encourage other people. I remember um, this was a time that you know the two but the, the the two prisoner had the dream. Uh, you know the, the the butler the the he was able to interpret the dream of the butler. He was able to interpret the dream of the baker. But the thing is, he was forgotten. He was forgotten by the butler. Here's a, he, here's the here's something that we need to learn from Joseph. He had this beautiful attitude. The never say die attitude. After the the baker was was hung, after the the the, the cup bearer was uh, reinstated or re reinstalled to his position, the chief cup bearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him, but still. Even though Joseph, no, he has this never say die attitude. I remember when the butler forgot about Joseph. I remember the many times that uh, we experience forgetting about Jesus, right? Yeah. The, the thing about Joseph that is worth emulating is during his tough times, during his good times, and during his being governor of Egypt, never he forgets about the Lord. Then came the, then came the story of Pharaoh. He had, he had these dreams no one can interpret. Um, and uh, I was so miserable until the butler remembered about Joseph. And then he, he was presented to Pharaoh. Joseph was presented to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked about 
What can you do for me, Joseph? These are my dreams. And here's the, here's the answer of Joseph. This is, so, this is so full of humility. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Here's one thing that I really admire about Joseph. He never... He, he, this is, for me, this is an opportunity for him to lift himself up. And you know, this is my opportunity. This is my ticket out of the, of, out of the jail. This is my ticket out of prison. So I need to lift up myself and take the opportunity. But Joseph presented the opportunity to Pero as if he is powerless and everything will be defended to God. This is the thing. In everything that we do, we need to be a man of faith, a man and woman of faith like Joseph. Putting everything and trusting everything to God alone. And again, never ever take part of the glory. Just like what Joseph did. He gives, uh, he gives all the glory to God. He, he told Pero that if there's one thing that you need to, if there's one thing that you need to understand, the solution to your problem is not me. It is Jesus. It is the Lord. You need to understand, Pharaoh, that I need to lift up my Lord for you to learn more about my Lord, not about me. So that one day, if he will be able to have solution in your problem, and you will be so, you know, so grateful and so thankful, you will learn to thank him, not me. Because I lifted him up, not myself beautiful that that is so beautiful that is something that you know that is so admirable i i i really love joseph i i really love his attitude i really love his outlook in life i really love his how he i really love how he i really love how he loves the lord you know so sabi ni pharaoh well, can we find anyone like this man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then he promoted Joseph to be the next governor. And so on and so forth. So Joseph was uh, in charge of Egypt from prison to palace. Just like that. You see, when Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of Egypt, he's making a wise decision. For us, we need to make a wise decision too, like Pharaoh. Jacob, when he put Joseph in charge of all his, you know, shepherding stuff over his kuyas, brothers, he's making a wise decision. When Potiphar made Joseph in charge, he made a wise decision. When uh, the chief warden put Joseph in charge of the prison, he made a wise decision. Now, you see, like Joseph, Jesus is also in charge of our life. I want you, I want to encourage you, if you're watching right now, make a wise decision. Make sure that you put Jesus in charge of your life. Allow Jesus to drive, to drive the vehicle of your life towards a beautiful destiny towards a beautiful life with him. You see, uh, in, 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 in verse 43, it says, he had him ride in chariot as his second in command. And people shouted before him, make way. Does he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt? Brothers and sisters, make Jesus in charge of your life. Be wise like Jacob. Be wise like Potiphar. Be wise like the chief warden. Be, be wise like Pharaoh. Make Jesus in charge of your life. Just like when they made Joseph in charge of everything that they have. Here's the Joseph of 19. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. But without your word, no one will lift or foot in or I'm sorry, no one will lift hand or foot in all Egypt. 
that is Joseph anointing. That, that is something that uh, indescribable. Because he's nobody. It, when he's, when, I, I can imagine he was having his breakfast as a, the lowest of the lowest prisoner. In the afternoon, he became the governor of Egypt. So don't give up. It, it might be after your breakfast, you know, the Lord will hand it to you. You, you much awaited, uh, you know, much awaited prayer, prayer item. Not only that, uh, he was uh, blessed. Everything that was given to him, from wife to children to power to fame, you know? and then um, he was able to collect all the food. No produce in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. And then he was able to ready Egypt for the seven years of famine to come because the anointing is still there. It never left him. And uh, we all know that uh, he was married to Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh. It is because God has made me forget all my trouble and my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Blessings, we need to understand, blessings will overtake you. Blessings, a lot of people in the heard, please give me blessings. Lord, please bless me. Lord, please allow blessings to follow me. No, 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 no. And you're anointed. Just like Joseph. And you decided to stick it out with Jesus. Blessings will not follow you. Because blessings will overtake you. Food, shelter, clothing. All the desires of your heart. As long as it is in the parameters of God's will. Everything will be given to you. You don't have action to ask for it. Because it will overtake you. Just like what happened to Joseph. Then, of course, the seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began. And we all know that uh, th th there is this famous line that uh, then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph, do what he tells you. Same thing. If you're part of King Jesus, whenever you're in trouble, because the people of Israel were, were like, when all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Anong sagot ni Pharaoh? Go to Joseph. Do what he tells you. Go to Jesus and do what he tells you. When the going gets tough, go to Joseph, according from Pharaoh. But in our life right now, when the going gets tough, go to Jesus and do what he tells you to do. I know of two Joseph. One from one Joseph from palace to prison, and our Joseph from prison to palace. See, Joseph is a picture of Jesus. One day, every knee will bow. God has a plan for us. Remember that, and we need to praise God in the whole way. For God will open the door. Call upon His name. Is faithful to answer you. Never ever doubt the plan of God in your life. Sometimes, no, as we end throughout life, yeah, you know, people will constantly putting label on us. You know, some people will tell us, oh, you know, these are the only things that you can do, these are the things that you cannot do. Some people will tell us some good things. Some people will tell us bad things. I remember Winston Churchill. No. He, he failed the sixth grade. Imagine, Win the great Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill failed the sixth grade. You know, you know what? One of the greatest wartime leaders of the 20th century 
si Winston Churchill. No? He, he was also an officer in the British Army. He was also known as a historian, a writer, and an artist. He's the only British Prime Minister to have received the Nobel Prize in literature. <laughs> Not even related to being a Prime Minister. And was also the first person to be made an honorary citizen of the United States. Wow. Never applied for a green card. He just became a citizen right away. Good for you. You cannot stop that. Let's learn from, from Joseph. Let's learn from Winston Churchill. Failed the sixth grade. But he became one of the most famous, iconic, you know, historical figure we ever know. So many achievements. You cannot stop the negative comments in your life. Just like Joseph received a lot of negative comments from his brothers. But you can choose not to listen. That's, that, that's how the enemy works. Eh? He will try to put negative thoughts. He will try to discourage you. He will try to prove to you that you are worth for nothing. It's just a piece of me here on earth. That's not true. You are a spiritual being, specially made by God, you know, wonderfully and fearfully made, specially made. And you were put into a meek. But here's the thing you can choose not to listen. To all the negative comments that you will receive in your eyes. I remember Psalm 121, 1 to 2. Never ever look into people, never ever look into your pastors, never ever look into your leaders, your political leaders, government leaders, never ever look to people who are above you or famous and you know, and try to emulate what they what they did, what they are doing. Always lift up your eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Focus your eyes to Jesus alone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Joseph. We learn a lot, we learn a lot from his life. We thank you for, for, for making his life as... Uh, so inspiring that we, 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 will, we will be able to emulate, Lord God, all the characteristics that He showed, all the faithfulness, all the, all the mercy, all the blessings, all the, you know, being the brother's keeper, you know, the, the, the patience, the perseverance, the, the, that kind of faith that He showed, Lord God. We thank you for his relationship towards you. Lord, we pray for Joseph anointing. And we pray, Lord, that in spite of whatever happening in our lives, thank you for being there. Lord, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Make me a new person. Reveal yourself to me. I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As I end, allow me to bless you. Not me blessing you, but the Lord, the Lord, our dear God, will bless you through me. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Nice to see you again. Good night.